Hello. Hey, it's Seth. How you doing? I, I'm good. This has been an exciting week. It has. Because the Degrassi Goes Hollywood movie trailer came out this week. Totally. It looks so, like, shiny and real. <laughs> I know. Seriously. It's like, wow, Degrassi movie. I mean, it looks really cool. It looks like... I got it. Okay, wait, wait. I got it because I, I need to clear this up. Okay. Because there, there's rumors. Somebody keeps posting in various websites that, that this is not actually a Degrassi movie, that it's actually just a bunch of episodes of Degrassi that we're squishing oh, together and calling a movie. Man. That is not true. It's a movie. It was written to be a movie. It's a full-length movie. I mean, it's on TV, but it's a movie. It's not yeah. just like three episodes of Degrassi squished together. It was intended to be a movie. It's in L.A., it's like the old cast is back. It's a movie, and 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 okay, we're calling Stacey Farber. Oh, yeah, totally <laughs> it's been so long since we've talked to her, but she's in there. Obviously, they've seen her in the trailer. They've seen her making eyes at Craig. <laughs> yes, exactly. I'm going to have her confirm that this is actually a movie. Yeah, they will believe her. I love that we have an excuse to call Stacey Farber again. It has been so long. I know. Seriously, it's been a long time. We have we have history with Stacey Farber. The truth is, our history has always just been that we've just always desperately wanted her to like us. I know. Oh, my God. I still cringe when I think about the first time I met her because I was just like, Hi, it's me! I was just... Such <laughs> ridiculous story about, and it, we had had all this like cool rapport on like I am, and like you know we were totally like down and friends, and then like I met her and like screwed it up by being like way too much of a fangirl. But anyway, <laughs> let's call her up. All right, let's do it. Oh, plus I hate the outfit I was wearing that day. Okay, anyway, calling Stacy Parker. Huh? Hello, Stacy. Hi. Hi, it's Mary and Seth calling from the end.com. Oh, Hi, my Stacey. God. Right? <laughs> Years later. How long has it been? It's been so long. How are you? <laughs> oh, we're good. How, good. Are, you? How are you? I'm good. Are you still in New York? What's up? Yeah, um, I'm graduating in like two weeks. <gasps> Oh wow. My God. Oh, my God. I, I can't believe it's been that long. I know. It's been three years. Time flies. Just as you picked up, I remember that the first time we ever did this was with you. I don't even know yes. what year that was. Yeah, you were wow. our first podcast. <laughs> so wait, are you in finals right now? or? Yeah, I have a week left. Why do we always get you during your exams? Everyone else seems to be like doing nothing, and I'm always stressed out with school. Oh, God. Uh, so how was college? <laughs> <laughs> How were the last three years? Uh, it was awesome. Yeah. Yeah. It was so good. Um, I I'm so happy that I came here. I met really cool people and made some really good friends. And just having the experience of living in New York was really special. Yeah. And I'm gonna miss it. Was it like what you expected college would be like? You know, when you first got there? No, and I didn't. I don't think I really had any expectations. It was sort of impulsive, like when I applied and, and decided to come here. Um, mm -hmm. I transferred from a university in Toronto. I have found that those decisions kind of work out the best, the most impulsive ones. Ooh. So, What have you impulsively decided lately? <laughs> <laughs> I don't know if that's uh, PG for the podcast. <laughs> okay. No. Um, I don't know, just agreeing to go somewhere, like last minute or meeting people. You know, that's funny. My mom sent me this card once that was like, I always find that the best answer is usually what the hell. Like, why not? Yeah. It's kind of true. It's true. It's, it's like the most fun. And I don't know. Can we talk a little bit about your Teen Vogue internship? I know that was like a while ago now, but I'm just so fascinated by like anybody who gets to kind of step deep inside the fashion world because it's such a weird place. <laughs> yeah. Um, it, w it wasn't my first internship. I was at Nylon the year before. Oh, I didn't know that. Yeah, I was, I was actually in the fashion department at Nylon. Oh, wow. And at Teen Vogue, I was more in editorial working for the web department. Okay. Mm -hmm. So they were very different internships. At Nylon, I was doing more of the running around Soho, like dealing with clothes and shipping things and unpacking things and um, getting coffee and stuff like that. And there were lots of interns there. Um, and then at Teen Vogue, I was the only intern in the department, and there were only three people working in the department. So it was much smaller, and I had a lot more responsibility. Mm -hmm. um, so I got to write for the website, and my boss was amazing. He was the best. EJ. 
EJ, yeah, the best, like, site supervisor, best boss, like, you could ever have for an internship. Like, he wanted me to try new things. He wanted me to write. He sent me to Fashion Week. He sent me to interview, like, Emma Roberts in, like, a suite at a hotel. Like, I'd only ever been on the other side of that, like, being interviewed. So when I had to show up and, like, deal with a publicist who looked at me and thought I was like 12 years old. Like, <laughs> I was like, hey, I'm here to interview Emma. And like, they gave me her press kit. And like, I went up to her suite and she was like, you look really familiar. <laughs> I, was like, I was like, yeah, this is kind of weird. I'm on TV, <laughs> but also interviewing you about your Hotel for Dogs movie or whatever it was. <laughs> But, like, I, I think I saw in a couple of your blogs that you, like, you, you went to some events where, like, you're meeting some pretty high-powered fashion people. And I'm just imagining that, like, a lot of people who work at Teen Vogue are obviously, like, extreme fashionistas. And my experience with that world is that there's almost this, like, this OCD with people who are extremely into fashion where it's just, like, needing to be sure that you have, like, the thing that's, like, the most current. Um, yeah, definitely. I It's a very strange world and it's really superficial and that's probably why I decided after I was at Nylon I would never work in a fashion department again Mm -hmm. not (laughs) not because anything bad happened but just because like I I didn't care about it that much Mm -hmm. um fashion has always just been something that I think is fun and I can appreciate like how clothes are made and when things are really beautiful I'm, I'm aware of trends and I know the designers but I'm not OCD about it at all and yeah, I'm also yeah. not a competitive person at all <laughs> so I know really I'm like very laid back so I would never want to like climb the corporate ladder or like steal shoes from something for a shoot like I that's not for me so that's that's why I wanted to try the editorial side of it. Have you felt like you kind of want to continue to pursue writing? Um, I'm not sure. I I studied writing in college because it was like the one thing I thought I could do for a couple of years mm-hmm. um, and get a degree in. <laughs> <laughs> like I could tolerate it because I like to read and writing is just such a good skill. So I wanted to learn how to do it well Mm -hmm. but I did another internship this year I was at Allure magazine in the beauty department oh wow um yeah that was cool but I don't know I think had I not interned at so many places I probably would have graduated and been really eager to get a job at a magazine because it would be something I I didn't know anything about and since I've had three internships at different like major publications in the states it's like I know what it's like. They're all kind of the same after a while. And they're cool, but, like, I've done it before, and I'm not that eager to pursue it right now. Yeah. So the novelty kind of wore off. Um, for better or worse. There's this whole thing called the internet mm-hmm. where you can write. Yeah, <laughs> there's that too. <laughs> and I could try that. Um, I, I would probably like to try and get published somewhere, freelance for some maybe online publication. But, um, hmm. yeah, I got a new show. So that just right. sort of happened. Um, I, I sent a tape. I didn't really audition for anything throughout college. Uh-huh. And then my agent would, like, send me things here and there to look at. And I got one for a Canadian show, um, a new comedy. And it was for the lead role. So I was like, you know what, it would be worth it if I got this. And I had to drop out of school. This was last year. So I thought, I'll, okay. I'll send a tape. This is something that would actually be, like, worth my time. And then I got it, and we filmed the pilot last year. And then they were starting shooting this year, which is really great because I get to graduate and be done. Yeah, yeah. you didn't have to drop out. Yeah, and perfect. now I have a job in the recession and post-graduation. Wow. Oh, my God. Yeah, and the show's really awesome. I think it'll be in the States eventually, but for now it's on a Canadian network. And yeah. tell us what it's called. The show? Yes. Yeah, 18 to Life. 18 to Life. So. So. About that Degrassi. Yeah, yeah. that Degrassi movie thing that we've heard about. <laughs> I saw the um, extended trailer the other day. It's good, right? Yeah. Amazing. And I mean, is it was it kind of like a little bit of a reunion for you guys? Because I guess, like, how long had it been since you'd seen, like, Jake Epstein when you guys shot that? Um, like, maybe a year. Mm-hmm. It was great. Um, well, I live in New York, so I don't see them that often, but I do talk to Lauren and Adama, like, 
every day. But it's always nice when we get to work together because there's just a different, we're really energetic on set and the downtime in between scenes is always nice just to sit and like be in the same room. And Jake, I hadn't seen in a long time. He was he was in a play or he was filming something else at the same time. So his schedule was the toughest, I yeah. think. And he just flew in for like one day to L.A. and we shot all of our stuff. We've been doing it for so long together that like I probably knew what to expect from him yeah. and how the scene would go before we even did it. Yeah, that's all. Awesome. So what can you tell us? I mean... I know not very much, but... (laughs) About the movie? About the movie, yeah. It's great. I mean, the trailer really sets it up. Like, Hollywood, it's glamorous, it's... I don't know, everyone, everyone's going to love it. They're they're going to love it. And I think they're going to be happy, hopefully, to see some of the older characters again. Uh, Wait, I actually... I need you to confirm something for me. Uh, Not confirm, but I, I need you to vouch... For this because people don't believe it when Mary or I say it. But there's this rumor floating around out there that the movie is nothing but a bunch of episodes stuck together to be extra long. But it's totally not. It's a movie. It's written to be a movie. It's a whole thing. It's like it's like a feature length movie. Can you just tell the world that that's the case? Because they'll believe it when you say it. <laughs> that is definitely <laughs> the case. It, it's all continuous. There's like three storylines that sort of go in and out of it's not, yeah, it's it's structured like a movie. It's Good. All right. Thank you. I appreciate that. <laughs> All right. Before we let you go, there was this one thing we saw on your Wikipedia, and we like to, you know, go straight to the horse's, as it were, mouth and ask them sometimes. And there's a thing on Wikipedia about you almost getting the Juno role. Is that true or false? That is, well, true. I don't know how close I was, but I was definitely close. This must have been like four years ago. I was in L.A., and my manager gave me all these scripts to read, and I got Juno, and I read it, and I laughed hysterically. I read it like five times in my hotel room. It was the funniest thing I'd ever read, and I made a tape and sent it into the casting director in New York, and they basically just said, no, like, we don't like you. We're not interested. (laughs) Um, So (laughs) then I, I made a second tape, and I wrote a letter to Diablo Cody, whose name was on the script. Uh Um, He was unknown then. Uh I wrote this whole letter, and I typed it, and I tried to be funny in the letter. And (laughs) I sent it to the address that was on the script. Um, I got a call, like, a couple months later from Diablo Cody saying that she thought it was an April Fool's joke when she got my package. She thought her husband, like, sent it to her because... She watches Degrassi all the time. I and, knew it. I totally knew it. she actually based Juno off Ellie in a way. Like, <gasps> she loves Ellie, and she always thought that, like, I could play her or something like that. Oh, my so, God. Yeah, so that started a whole other thing with my manager and agent being like, we have Diablo Cody on our side. Like, basically, they had narrowed it down to a couple people, including Ellen Page, and they threw me into the final mix. So they flew me to L.A., and I, I worked with the director for, like, five hours. I had coffee with Diablo. Um, oh, my God. And it was very exciting. Um, and I was there, like, the day after Ellen Page was there. And, yeah, I don't even know how close I was. But I was sad when I didn't get it. But, I mean, it would have been a different movie. And Ellen Page is incredible and did such a good job. So it's totally right for her and had I got the part, I mean, I wouldn't have come to New York and I wouldn't have done a million oh, right. other things. So right. Everything happens for a reason. And it I does. Think that, like, it, I love knowing that, like, Ellie is in there somewhere because <laughs> I knew, when, I, like, when I heard that, that was on your Wikipedia, I was kind of like, that totally makes sense because I know Diablo Cody has got to be a huge Degrassi fan. And the fact that Daniel Clark was cast in it, I was kind of like, she knows Degrassi. Like, she's she had a know. blog, and she used to blog about Degrassi. That's awesome. That's yeah. Awesome. That's a great story. It is a great story. It's cool. <laughs> yeah. All right. All right. We're going to let you go study for finals. Okay. Thank you. And uh, thank you for taking the time, as always. It's so good to hear from you. We miss you so much. Yeah. Oh, thank you. Bye, Stacey. Bye. Bye. Oh, my God. So that really was true. I love that. Yeah. Wow. I love that Diablo Cody was channeling Degrassi. Yeah. And she won an Oscar for that, right? Yes, she did. So, like, Degrassi changed the course of movie history. Oh, my God.
my God. You're so right. Huh? 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 <laughs> How about that? And it's going to do it again this summer. Bum, bum, bum. <laughs> oh, we are so good at our job. <laughs> yeah, right? <laughs> Way to podcast. Uh... Way to podcast, Mary. I'll talk to you next week. Okay, bye. Bye.